In Act 3, Scene 2 of Julius Caesar, Romans want answers about Caesar's death. Brutus calms the crowd, saying that he loved Caesar, but he loves Rome more. Brutus says it was a choice of slavery or freedom, and that because Caesar was ambitious, I slew him. The crowd is swayed. One declares, this Caesar was a tyrant. Another, we are blessed that Rome is rid of him. They want Brutus as their new ruler. Brutus leaves and Antony picks up the claim that Caesar was ambitious, adding that Brutus is an honorable man. Antony repeats the words ambitious, ambition, and honorable in a way that powerfully reframes their meaning. Caesar, he says, offered faithful friendship, provided for Rome, wept when his people wept, and refused the crown three times. But Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honorable man. When Antony stops to weep, the crowd is convinced that Caesar was wronged. Antony then holds up Caesar's will, but he won't read it. If the crowd knew what Caesar left them, how much he loved them, they'd get angry and he doesn't want to offend honorable senators. Now firmly on Antony's side, the crowd calls the conspirators traitors. Leading the crowd to Caesar's body, Antony names each of the conspirators. The crowd calls for revenge and vows to burn Brutus's house, but Antony tells them to wait. He reveals that Caesar left each citizen 75 drachmas and left all his lands to the people. The crowd, now a riotous mob, leaves to find the conspirators. Antony watches them go with pleasure, saying, Mischief, thou art afoot. Antony learns that Octavius is now in Rome and that Cassius and Brutus have fled. The audience is reminded of the power of public will. As opinion shifts from Brutus to Antony, this scene becomes both a funeral for Caesar and a trial of the conspirators. Note how Shakespeare uses literary form to underscore this shift. Brutus speaks in prose, but Antony's lines shift to verse. The crowd is initially swayed by Brutus, but Antony's superior rhetoric turns their opinion. Antony's speech is in fact one of literature's most famous examples of the power of rhetoric, and here it dramatically shifts the fortunes of Brutus and the conspirators. Note that Antony is careful not to defame the conspirators directly, but ironically conveys the opposite of what he says, making the word honorable more and more sarcastic. We see the power of words to effect material change as speeches lead to mob violence.